So um, welcome, Laura. Um, we can go ahead and get started. This is the, the third talk of this block of talks, and um, it's uh, the PID One ads from Metadata 2020, which myself and Laura are both involved in. So uh, this is a topic that's dear to my heart. Uh, Metadata 2020, for those that don't know, has been around for a few years, really trying to elevate the whole discussion around persistent identifiers and networked research. And so thank you, Laura, for joining us and take it away. Thanks. Yeah, I'm Laura Paglione. and I, I'm the project upholder for uh, for Metadata 2020, which basically means that um, I help coordinate the the huge group of the community of volunteers that have been working on Metadata 2020 for the se last several years. And um, this talk is focused primarily on the purpose of metadata, and it's it's kind of designed to be a 101 type. Uh, treatment of this, um, but we're trying to do it in a fun way. So we're going to talk about the PID want ads. Uh, just first, just a very quick description of Metadata 2020. Really, what we're what we've been doing is characterizing this idea of metadata and what it can do and what the promises of metadata in terms of really big ideas. And in this case, it's the uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Things like without open metadata, zero hunger will take longer. And really this is the case with all of the um, all of these big goals. Um, having open metadata makes things more searchable. Um, it makes it uh, easier to connect ideas and connect information. Um, and so this is the primary reason why we've been advocating for open and richer metadata. Um, I Just a very quick plug, we have, um, we have a, this is just a very short description of what we've um, been doing the last couple of years. Um, our main mission has been to advocate for richer, connected, and reusable metadata for all of our outputs, and that's primarily for three reasons. First, richer metadata fuels discoverability and innovation. The second is that connected metadata bridges those gaps between systems and communities. And the third is that reusable metadata eliminates the duplication of effort. And I just love this quote um, below, which I think is super uh, tied to those UN Sustainable Development Goals, in at least in, in feeling. Um, this quote is, most people wouldn't think, well, if we can fix this metadata, we can find a cure for a terrible illness. If we can find a way to connect those dots through more discoverable research, that would be huge. Nobody's asking, what is the cost to society? And so I hope you will come away from this discussion with a sense of really what the promise is of metadata. So let's first start with the problem. So suppose you're just doing research. It could be research on anything, you know, where to have dinner tonight, or it could be on how do I solve the, the big problems of the world. Um, in all of those cases, you may be doing research and looking for information and resources to help you answer those questions. And the question is, how do you find what you what you need? And you know, in the old days, back when we all used newspapers and paper, um, you might take out a classified ad. So in our case, we're talking about metadata. Our metadata might be something like research resource wanted a PID for an object that's not too big not too small, one that provides just the information that I seek and is in a language that I can understand, not too old, available in my country, accompanied by data and resources, open access only need apply. Now, that is a great ad. Now, I just wish I could put that in the newspaper and somebody, people would just call me up and say, I have the resource for you. That would be so awesome. Um, but of course, it doesn't really work that way. And on top of that, you know, you don't put white want ads in newspapers anymore. So the question I had in myself, to myself, I posed to myself is, yeah, if only there was a quicker way to find things than when taking out a want ad. And of course, the classic Google, this is just a postcard. Um, and I love this postcard of, uh, you know, type, write in your query, say what type of object you'd like, and allow 30 days for search results. In some ways, sometimes when we're looking for things, we're not that far off from 30 days for search results. And um, one of the key bridges in, fine, in enabling 
um, computer resources, um, computer searches and parsing to help us find those resources is by classifying some of the things that we're trying to find. For example, we might need a location. Where do we find that um, find that object once we once we know that the object exists? How do we find it? So that might be a PID. Um, uh, other things are like resource attributes, things like the file size, the language, the publication date. So it's not too big, it's not too small, a language I can understand, not too old. These are the kinds of things that, that would fit into that category. Another category would be the, the content itself, the information that I seek. Really, the, the key underlying question there is, will the resource that you're going to ultimately point me to be a useful one? And how, you know, what are the triggers to understand that? What would be included in that, uh, in that resource um, that would make, it real, make me realize that it was something that was going to be useful? Another thing is related resources. So sometimes finding a resource is just the path. It's one step in the journey of finding the answer that you're looking for. So that one step opens up your vision to see what the next steps could potentially be. And so things like accompanying uh, a resource by other with other data and resources can help, in help increase the ability to take the steps on that path really quickly. And then the, another area, and this is not a comprehensive idea of what you might want to parse, but these are these are really common things that people are looking for. The last uh, the last one I'll talk about today is use and access rights. So, for example, we want it to be available in my country. I want to be able to see it where I live, and I need it to be open access. I need to be able to openly use that resource uh, so that I can uh, incorporate it into the research that I'm doing. This is all metadata. And the metadata is, as you can see, the metadata is really critical to understanding whether you can find the thing that you're that you're looking for to see if it even exists. So um, this is the key reason why we've been advocating for open and rich metadata. It, it isn't good enough that the metadata exists. If you can't access it, then it might as well not exist. So we're gonna take that idea. And we're going to do a couple of want ads ourselves just to kind of get the practice of like what kinds of things we're going to be looking for. Now, if you've not used Slido before, you can either take a screenshot of this giant R um, RC code, or you can just go and type slido.com into your browser. You'll be presented with a web with a web window. And on that window, in fact, you it, it very nicely browses you directly to the to the box that you want to type this in. Um, you just type in want ad. And if you go to want ad, you'll be presented with a screen that probably doesn't have very much on it right now until I press this button. So here is a want ad. Uh, it's a different one than, than you just saw. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, there are a couple of examples. We have three examples that we're going to try. Um, we're going to look at this, this want ad. I'll read it to you in just a moment. And then as I'm reading it, and you're thinking about what kind of information would I need? What, is the, what are those metadata fields that would be useful in order to find this, this item? Um, type those choices into Slido. And then we'll take a look at what everybody said. Um, you don't have to participate, but it would be really fun if you did, because um, it, will, it will lead to a really beautiful word cloud. So. Um, It'd be great if you can add your thoughts um, into, into this. Uh, okay, so this want ad is data set wanted. Data set related to a useful paper that I recently read. Data field de definitions and related software are particularly helpful. We'll need to know the software language for the software and the data format for the data. Contact information for those who worked with the data in the past is particularly helpful. So I want you to go in. I see that people are starting to type in their answers. Um, go in. You can type in more than one item. You can either, it gives you the option to type in a couple of things and then hit submit. Or you, if you type in one thing and you press submit, um, then uh, the second, the, all the other things that you type will, will be added. Um, one thing, if you're worried that it's not working because the number doesn't increase, 
Um, so this number here says, this is the number of people that have participated so far, not the number of answers. So if you put in five answers, it will still only increase by one here. So I see this is, this is going. I'm looking forward to seeing what the metadata ideas are. And just to remind people, we, we did put the link in the chat here at slido.com. And as Laura said, you just type in the code want add. It's very simple. So just go to your phone and it's the easy way to yeah. add some ideas. And we'll be in the same place for the whole thing. So once you once you're in, you'll be in for the whole for the whole session. Okay. We have about 38 answers. I'm going to reveal what people have said so far. And if you are still inclined to answer, to add to this, please do. All right. So here's the list of um, items that people have put in. And I can see that author is super high on the list of um, things that, uh, that would be useful or good ideas which are related to authors, author and authors are listed there, contributors. So there's this idea of uh, individuals, those people that are participating. That was something that was mentioned later in the ad. Um, this idea of language and um, software language, uh, the discipline of data set needed. These are all those attributes of the object itself. What does it look like? Um, I love this changing like this while we're while we're talking. You probably can see it on your screens as well. There's license information and data format, the organization that's participating. This is great. Excellent. So let's move on and try another another one. Oh, I don't want to stop you. There's 55 people who have done this. This is awesome. OK, I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, and rest assured, these are all kept. So, um, so what I can do is I will share these these tag clouds along with the um, with the want ad for them in the session uh, after the session is after the session is over. I'll add it to the Pitapalooza website. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to a new a new one, and, and your your screen is refreshed, but those answers are are um, held, so uh, so we can recreate that word cl word cloud. Okay, this next one is a different kind of resource. This is an artifact that's needed. And this want ad is, reads, wanted. Access to collections containing stone archeological objects from the Mexican Teotihuacan period, period that may be studied by a UK researcher. Seek artifact locations, access requirements, and past studies involving the items. Phys physical object study preferred. However, photo and catalog information is also useful. So what kinds of metadata would be helpful in this situation? It's a different kind of research object. I'm getting some votes there. And my apologies to anybody who actually does this kind of research. I've made these up, and these may not even be realistic um, searches. <laughs> so hopefully, they're they're authentic enough. It's interesting because in, in past, I think maybe last year and the year before, we had a couple talks on actual samples, physical samples. 
and the relationship between physical samples and identifiers. And so as I was just thinking about the answers to some of these things, I was thinking, you know, a lot of it's around the, how this, how the communities um, adopt. So, I mean, there is the specific example here of, of artifacts, but there's also just the kind of general ideas of how to, how do archeological groups come together to work with identifier groups. Yeah. And, all right, let's take a look at this word cloud. And again, you're welcome to continue to type things in. Location is a top thing here. But there's a lots of variations on the, the word description. There's description, there's physical description. Um, access conditions and related studies. A little bit on policies and license information, reuse light rights. Nice PIDs there, things like sample, um, sample ID, unique object ID. And then the connecting things like publications about the artifact, tribal and cultural restrictions on access and use. So as you can see, there's such a breadth of information that can be collected about this object that can really help in finding and in, in enabling people to find the resource. You know, one comment that's come up in the chat is around metadata and just how metadata itself, you know, needs this kind of evaluation on different use cases. And I think it's interesting how that interacts with uh, persistent identifiers because at their very root, PIDs are about retrieving metadata. And, um, you know, it's one of the reasons why we have this festival is because we're trying to demystify what a PID is. and for different communities, that demystification is different things. Um, and for a lot of information and libraries um, backgrounds, um, persistent identifiers is maybe jargon, but metadata is something that is close to home. Um, you know, that's definitely different for different communities. But in reality, um, persistent identifiers are really just, you know, retrievable metadata records. Um, and so this is a great way of showing just exactly how you can, you know, leverage PIDs to grab certain metadata based on different use cases. Excellent. Well, we have one more example. <clears throat> this is a slightly different kind of thing. Um, this one reads, wanted translations. Seeking translations for Shakespearean text from late 1800s through mid 1900s. Original text useful, most interested in first translations into target languages. Desire information of the, about the translator and who funded the translation. My apologies to all the scientists out there. I figured science always gets the, the love on uh, these kinds of search things. So I was heavy on the humanities on this one. Yeah, and one thing this reminds me of is just the kind of maybe age old question, if that's appropriate, of um, like orchids for dead people kind of a thing. You know, how do we deal with, um, with everything we're talking about here, we're talking, uh, we, we tend to focus a lot on the present and the future. 
instead of on the past. And I like this example of, you know, how do you work within the systems and the tools that we're creating right now in a way that reflects past contributions, including people who are no longer around? Um, and, you know, sometimes we talk about that in terms of like, you know, the, the orchids for, you know, should there be orchids for dead people kind of a conversation. And that that is something that our community grapples with and talks about a lot. It's important because we, I mean, this is, this is a, these are key resources and key use cases for research. Yeah, I completely agree with you, um, John. I, I think the other thing I like about this is that, um, you know, this this kind of thing is somewhere between a, an artifact and a written work, right? Because it's it's a written work, but it's not. It doesn't. In some cases, these, this type of resource doesn't exist digitally, so it becomes an artifact. And how do you bridge the gap between those two? Yeah, like the shameless plug, heritage bids tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, there's a session tomorrow that the Heritage Pitch, it's a, I mean, to me, these are one of the, like, this this connection that you're bringing up of, you know, bringing what is very STEM focused in many people's minds into the humanities and social sciences, that's one big thing. And then this temporal, like, the time aspects of PIDs, it's something that we, these two issues are very, um, they're very important for us to, as a community, talk about more, flesh out. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Look at that language, of course, because we're talking about translation and translators. Translator ID. Love the PIDs in there. Grant ID. There's title and funder, date. We have where the translation was published, the translator's relationship to the source, the title in original language what text was used for the source, format research notes. So that's related, related um, resources as well. We had source format and version information, source version, um, probably translation version as well. Okay, so this one's kind of slowing down now. So we've we've just gone through three different examples, three different ideas of you know things that somebody might be looking for, ones that they'd want to bring, um, set a want to add for, and now the question is, let, now I thought it would be nice to have some discussion. Um, we can't all just hop on and talk. Uh, and when we're in the chat, sometimes it's a little bit hard to, to see. So what I'm going to suggest is that we pose a couple of questions and then we'll use Slido to, um, for you to kind of give your responses because then we can kind of see them together. You can thumbs up them, the things that you, that you'd like to highlight that you are, are plus one on. So, um, the first one this first one is written as a, a yes or no question, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change it slightly. So the question originally posed is, how easy would it be to find the metadata and PIDs for these items today? Um, and I'm gonna change it slightly. Into, instead of saying how easy would it be, the question is, what would it take? What would somebody need to do in order to, in order to find uh, metadata and PIDs for those types of types of items today? And as you're typing items in, you can type your answers to this question and they're going to pop up on the screen. Hopefully they are in cross ref for data save. I agree with you. And Laura, just a time check. We are at five till, so we probably can continue for about three more minutes. Okay. army of indexers. Their tools are keyboards.
The pigs, we can't. Google helps, lots of duplicates, not good aggregators. All right, so in the time, let me just kind of go through. I'm going to skip these two questions. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the who. So in order to make this, this idea of being able to find things more, easy, more easily, who would need to be involved in order to make it happen? You know, researchers, pig graphs, librarians. <laughs> Laura Paglione, I'm just gonna be there cataloging everything. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> People who submit metadata, but who should that be? This is such a fantastic list. And to me, John, to me, this this list is looking very much like the uh, the answer of everyone needs to be evolved. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, some of the work that we've done within Metadata 2020 is about trying to kind of catalog these types of use cases into um, constructs that can be then used and leveraged in future discussions. And so I'm thinking of like, we can't, there was this work that was done within the metadata 2020 um, community around thinking about what are the four main groups that we talk about when we're trying to work with metadata. And those were the four C's, you know, creators, consumers, curators, and what was the fourth one? Creators. Oh. So there's four C's. I, I'll leave the fourth <laughs> one as a cliffhanger so people can go to the metadata. Go, yes. <laughs> and learn right. more but i mean these are this is the kind of information that we're like trying to really i am not sure if john froze or if i froze Oh, great, you can still hear me. Okay, well, um, we encourage, since this is a job for everybody, we encourage everyone to to take an active role in making richer metadata. So um, visit us at metadata2020.org and see other things that you can do. Thanks. <laughs>